another uh, military survivor benefit plan. Yes, we're going to talk about here today, my friends, a military SBP survivor benefit plan. Get a lot of questions on this, and uh, I think it's important to kind of go into it a little bit deeper. If you're enlisted uh, and you're going to retire and you're officer and you retire, I, I don't know how officers work for sure in terms of what kind of knowledge they get as it comes to uh, separating from service. I just, my inclination is they probably get more so than enlisted. So, um, you know, this would be for both sides, enlisted versus officer, but my, my you know, concern is probably too strong. My intuition is that I think a lot of enlisted probably don't get the same level of service. I hope that's not true. I mean, it's been a long, long, long time since I was in the military and the army, but uh, so let's just dive into this. I think you like this. If you like what you see here at Heritage Wealth Planning, uh, please subscribe the YouTube channel, subscribe down below. And then, of course, give me a thumbs up. Always help a thumbs up and uh, comments, too. Comments help a lot, believe it or not. So let's go right into this. This is directly from militarycompensation.gov. As you can see here, militarypay.defense.gov. Militarypay.defense.gov. So let me click out this guy. And what you'll see is I went to... Um, benefits. All right. So I went to benefits and now we're going to go to survivor benefit plan. So you go to militarypay.defense.gov and you get your uh, calculators here. And the calculators are okay. Um, and I just did one on active duty high 36. Um, and I will do one on BRS often next time. Uh, but for right now, I did want to hit the uh, the survivor benefit plan. So let's go right here. Oh, they do have one on a TSP. I'll probably do something like that on TSP too, because I'm a big fan of TSP. Oh, they got one SGLI. Okay, sweet. That's interesting. All right, I'll have to go back to that. So for the SBP, just click on Survivor Benefit Plan. And then it gets the whole thing right here. And I'm just literally going to read this to you and make a comment should, uh, should it be warranted. Uh, so the SBP, Survivor Benefit Plan, is a de Department of Defense sponsored and subsidized program that provides up to 55% of a service member's retired pay to an eligible beneficiary upon the death of the member. The program includes no-cost automatic coverage to members serving on active duty and reserve components, members who die of a service-connected cause while performing inactive duty training. In addition, active duty members can purchase coverage upon retirement, and reserve component members can elect coverage when they have 20 years of qualified service uh, reserve retired pay. So we're just going to go over this right here. So let's go over the overview, and we'll just go down the list. It'll be uh, Some pages are pretty small, some pages are longer, so bear with me if you will. Military retired pay stops upon the death of the retiree, all right? The SBP allows a retiree to ensure after death a continuous lifetime annuity for their dependents. I can't stress that enough. You die, it stops. The only thing that keeps it is SBP. The annuity, which is based on a percentage of retired pay, is called SBP and is paid to an eligible beneficiary. It pays your eligible survivors inflation-adjusted monthly income. So it does have a cost of living adjustment in there. That's huge. Not only does your pension have a cost of living adjustment, so, so doesn't the SBP. A military retiree pays premiums for SBP upon retiring from service. Premiums are based on gross retired pay, so they don't count as income. This means less tax and less out-of-pocket costs for a survivor benefit plan. Because the money you pay towards your SBP, we'll talk about here in just a second how much that is, is not taxable income to you. The premiums are partially funded by the government and the cost of operating the program are absorbed by the government. So the average premiums are well below the cost for a conventional insurance policy. That man, I, hmm, I cannot stress this enough. When you separate from service, you have a bunch of retired, uh, not retired, well, a lot of them times will be retired agents wanting to uh, tell you to forget the SVP, buy an insurance policy, and they'll show you all these different concoctions of the benefits thereof of saving your survivor benefit premium, you know, two, and we'll get to about two or 300 bucks a month, instead of using that to fund a whole life policy. And uh, I, I just, we're going to talk about that, but the average premiums are well below the cost of a conventional insurance policy for the survivor benefit plan. For most retirees, SBP is a good choice, but the government contribution is based on assumption and average cases may not apply equally to every situation. Absolutely. So it might not be the best choice for you, but generally speaking, it should be your default, my friends. Absolutely. Um, the maximum, oh, let's see, the maximum SBP is 50 for a spouse is 55% of the member's retired pay. Or in the case of a member retires under redux, the retired pay the member would have received if under the high three retirement system. Okay, so 55% is 
is the maximum, but a smaller amount could be elected. Eligible children may also be SBP beneficiaries, either alone or as added to spousal coverage. In the latter case, the children receive benefits only if the spouse dies or otherwise becomes ineligible to receive the annuity. All right, so eligible children equally divide the benefit that's 55% of the member's elected base amount. Child coverage is relatively inexpensive because children get benefits only while they're considered eligible dependents. So uh, you just not going to be much of a benefit to a, a, ch- a child. Uh, once they're non-eligible dependents, you know, essentially they're on their own, it stops. Coverage is also available for a former spouse if the retiree has no spouse or children for an insurable interest. Uh, an insurance, uh, insurable interest is a big deal in life insurance. I can't just go buy life insurance from my guy down the street because if I did, I could have an incentive to kill him. And so you have to have an insurable interest. I don't want to buy life insurance from somebody and then benefit from his untimely demise because I rewired his braking system. Um, SVP and other estate planning information. We buy insurance as a way to cope with a major financial risk. We buy it to protect ourselves from the financial hardships of events we can't foresee, like car accidents and housing fires. Retired pay is a valuable asset without question. Since it stops when a retiree dies and no one can foresee when that will be, it may be useful to protect. Survivor benefit, my friends, is just life insurance. It's literally you're buying a life insurance uh, but it's not going to pay out in one fell, fell swoop. It'll pay out with a monthly pay- premium uh, to your surviving. And we're just going to say spouse to make it simple. Uh, survivor uh, SVP is similar to life insurance. However, premiums or benefits differ from, uh, from most life insurance plans. Uh, it protects survivors against loss of financial security upon the death of the retiree, but it does more. It got a little estimation point. It does more. It also protects the survivor against the possibility of outliving the benefit. I, I'm telling you. Many insurance plans pay a fixed benefit that may run out years before the survivor dies. So let me just go back to real world example. You don't do the SVP. You get your benefit. Instead, you buy a $300,000 whole life policy. 15 years from now, you're still having a $300,000 whole life policy because it hasn't gone. It hasn't added anything to it, generally speaking. Most don't anymore. And so now the cost of your benefit, uh, I mean, your benefit has increased with the COLAs, you know, pretty significantly. All right, but your three hundred thousand dollar life insurance benefit still stayed at three hundred thousand bucks. So now, what was kind of maybe even Stephen? Now this right here, your SBP or your pension is way up here in terms of value, but your life insurance is still only three hundred thousand dollars. It hasn't grown, and so now you get hit by the proverbial bus, and your surviving spouse only gets this amount of money, which there's still a pretty significant gap there. So she's probably going to outlive it. Um, because she can't generate that kind of income that it was up here 15 years when you died uh, with a $300,000 life insurance. You just can't generate that same kind of replacement income. Uh, in addition to a long life of another unpredictable, oh, okay, uh, it protects the survivor against uh, many years. Okay, yeah, right. In addition to long life, another unpredictable reason a survivor may outlive the benefits is inflation. Exactly. SBP protects against this risk through COAs. Inflation may be the biggest financial uncertainty of all. It erodes the value of fixed incomes, yeah. making them worth less and less as times go by. Few, if any, private insurance plans will tailor uh, insure a survivor against inflation. Could not agree with that more. Again, 300000 generally is going to be fixed. SVP, it grows with inflation each and every year. In fact, no known insurance company has guaranteed to match SBP benefits at equal cost or less. One reason is that SBP premiums have a built-in discount in the form of government paying a significant portion of the premiums, making the plan a good buy for most people. Another consideration is that SBP premiums reduce the retiree's taxable income and reduce out-of-pocket costs for coverage. SBB benefit, SBP or benefits are taxed as income to the survivor and to the retiree, frankly. However, the tax rate upon receipt of the annuity will generally be less than the members, uh, the current tax rate. Most insurance plans are the first. Premiums are paid from after tax and the survivor is not taxed on the proceeds. So that is a benefit of life insurance that the SBP does not have. When I received a $300,000 lump sum, it's tax free. Whereas if I receive the SBP on a monthly basis, I do have to declare that as taxable income. Um, still, SBP alone is not a complete estate plan. Other insurance investments are important to meet the needs, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Is SBP a good buy? Given the current government contribution towards a portion of the premium, the answer for most retirees is yes. Whether SBP is a good buy for an individual depends on your personal preferences, your sex, age, health, blah, blah, blah. Uh, first, is SBP a product I can use? 
Personal preference may control the answer, but a subsidized lifetime inflation protected income for a surviving family is a very attractive. Most people cannot agree more. How much SBP is needed? If you know when you'll die, you'll know how much your survivor needs, but we don't know. And they give us coal as cost of living adjustments to at least keep up with inflation. How much SBP can I afford? The benefits do carry a price tag, but due to the government contribution, the plan should be attractive for most members. And remember, the tax advantage on premiums reduce premiums reduce the out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, caution. This is a big one right here, my friends. If you are married and decline SBP at retirement, you will not be eligible to later cover that spouse or cover new spouse should this marriage end in divorce or divorce or death and you later remarry. To be eligible to provide SBP coverage for a later acquired spouse, you must elect coverage for your spouse at retirement. Some people think they can join SBP years after they retire called open season. They're just saying at the end of the day, don't rely on open season because just because this happened before, we can uh, add to it later on down the road. There's no guarantee that'll happen again. So just because people have been able to reject it at first and then later on buy into it, there's no, we don't know if that'll ever come to fruition. So if you're thinking of SBP, just buy it outright. All right, let's keep going. That's the overview. That's the biggest one here. Base amount. I like this here. So base amount. The SBP, the SBP premiums and benefits depend on what is referred as the base amount. The base amount is a dollar amount of coverage that is elected. The base amount can be any uh, amount ranging from 300 to the full amount of the member's retired pay. Uh, full coverage means that the full retired pay is the base amount. The base amount is tied to retired pay. When retired pay is adjusted due to cost of living adjustment, the base amount is adjusted and the premiums of the amount of the annuity increase. So basically you're saying if your base amount is $2,000 a month, that 24,000 a year, that is the base amount. You're gonna base a premium based on that. Now next year, your pre your, uh, it goes from 2,000 a month to 2,100. Your, your, that will be your base amount and your premiums will go up to reflect that your base amount has increased as well, but so does the annuity that your survivor gets too, all right? So that's your base amount based on your retired pay. Costs and benefits, this is the big one right here. When you retire, you may elect a, of any of several SBP options, which are listed below. SBP elections cannot be canceled or changed after the retirement, except in specific instances of a change in your marital status, status or the loss of a beneficiary. So if you get divorced, you can change it. If your beneficiary dies, you can change it. At retirement, full basic survivor benefit plan for spouse and children is automatic if you make no valid election. So you don't have to take affirmative action to get SVP. They're going to automatically give it to you unless you take an affirmative action to decline it. You may not reduce or decline spouse coverage without your spouse's written consent. If you have a former spouse, it may affect your options. I'm not going to, well, let's just go to spouse here real quick. Um, and you can read all the other stuff for a former spouse and whatnot. Spouse coverage is the primary option. It is designed to provide a lifetime monthly income for your surviving spouse after you die. The SBP annuity is determined by the base amount you elect. The base amount be, may range from a minimum of 300 up to a maximum of full retirement pay. The annuity is 55% of the base amount. The base amount and the payments to the surviving spouse will generally increase at the same time by the same percentage of cost of living adjustments. Spouse remarriage. Your surviving spouse may remarry after age 55 and continue to receive SBP payments for life, but ask me after 55. If your spouse remarries before 55, SBP will stop, but may be resumed if she, you know, again, using she, gets divorced later on. So that's a big deal. If you remarry after 55, the SBP will continue. If you remarry for, before 55, it will not unless your marriage later ends. So keep that in mind. The SBP premiums for spouse coverage are 6.5% of your chosen base amount. And they give us this right here. So here's our base amount of 2000 a month. SBP costs are 135 to 130 bucks a month, and that means your benefit will be $1,100 a month for your surviving spouse. All right, so that's you know six and a half percent. I mean that's what it is. Let me get my trusty calculator, which uh, I can't find, my friends. So I'm going to assume that is six and a half percent. Oh, here it is. So we take uh, 2,000 times by 6.5 percent. And that's 130 bucks. So six and a half percent is your premium cost, all right, um, of your base amount. So you're saying my base amount is 2,000. I want to give a full 55 percent. That's going to cost me 130 dollars a month in premium before tax, by the way. Um, and so that's that's how it works. So let's see what else we have here. And then they're saying, look, uh, your age at 40, and they just start going up. 
um, in terms of this is what you pay. Your retired pays two thousand. With inflation, your retired pays twenty three hundred. And there's the cost of living. Let's see if they kill. Uh, the SB, SBP costs using column two are ca- okay. I want to use this one right here. All right. Uh, I want to see at age seven or older. I want to see what they're using for inflation. I can't tell. Uh, retire pay. Okay, inflation is four percent a year. Okay, good. So at age forty, your spouse at age thirty eight, your retire pay is two thousand. Your cost is one hundred thirty dollars, and your spouse will get eleven hundred bucks. At age forty five, your benefit at four percent inflation has risen to twenty four hundred thirty three dollars. Your SBP has also risen the cost, and your spouse will get thirteen hundred. You can see that. So we keep paying. So at age 65, your retired pay is $5,330. Your monthly SBP is $346. Remember, 6.5% of your base amount. And your benefit to your surviving spouse will be just short of, of $3,000. Huh. At age 70, we've got an asterisk. Why? And then we got a zero. Why? Huh. Age 80, asterisk. At age 70 or older, a member who has paid premiums for 30 years, 360 months, is considered paid up. And no third further premiums are re- deducted from retired pay. However, SBP coverage continues. The tables show for not paid up and zero for paid up. So that is paid up right here. So if you didn't have it paid up because you hadn't been in there for 30 years, uh, let's say you retired at 55, right? And you hadn't been in, you've only been in there for 15 years. You still got to pay your premiums, which would be this. But if you retired at 40 and you've already paid for 30 years, your premiums are zero. And that's a pretty good deal. So now you got to pay nothing and you still have the surviving benefit, uh, survivor benefit plan that your spouse will get $3,500 a year, a month with continued cost of living justice for both you and she or, you know, you and him, whoever it is. Uh, and that's not a bad deal at all. So after 30 years of payment, you are paid up and no longer have to pay a uh, premium. Uh, if your spouse dies first and you get divorced, SBP costs will stop once you notified uh, DFAS. In divorce cases, spouse coverage may be converted to former spouse coverage. In some instances of divorce, conversion to private provide coverage of the former spouse may be required by court order. So, oh, here it is. This is a good one right here. Unmarried at retirement. The member who is unmarried upon retirement may elect SBP coverage for the first spouse after retiring. Um, however, the election must be submitted to uh, DFAS before the first anniversary of that marriage. The member who's unmarried upon retirement may elect a survivor coverage for the first spouse acquired after retiring. So if you get married, it looks to I me, mean, I'm not sure about this, but it looks like if you get married later on, uh, you can make the election, but it must be submitted to DFAS before the first anniversary of the marriage. So I'm assuming this says I'm 40, I just retired, I'm single. I go to college, I meet the lady of my life, I'm 45 years now, and so we just got married. I want to add her to my uh, SBP. I have to tell DFAS within a year of when we got married, and they can do that. I imagine that they're probably going to have a higher premium uh, than this because I missed the first five years of my premium, so they'll probably increase it. Uh, not only am I going to get an increase on my retired pay because of the cost of living adjustments, but they'll probably increase it, I imagine, too, simply because I hadn't paid into it for the first five years of my military retired pay. A lot going on there, but I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's keep going. We talk about paid up. We talk about opting, uh, integration with a VA benefits. Let's read this right here. A VA pays a benefit called DIC, dependency and indemnity compensation, to your surviving spouse and dependent children if you die of a service-connected cause. This includes death after retirement if the cause of death is due to an injury incurred or disease contracted while you're on active duty. DIC may also be paid if you 100% VA disability rating for 10 continuous years prior to death. Uh, Benefit as of 2009, DIC payments to all surviving spouses are at the monthly rate of 1154 adjusted annually for cost of living adjustment. If you are rated as totally disabled as a service connected disability for at least eight is entitled to an additional 246. An additional 286 is paid for each child per month. Uh, any DIC paid to your spouse is subtracted from your SBP payments, although DIC payments do not affect SBP. Oh, see, I did not know that. That stinks. Um, any DIC paid to your spouse is subtracted from your SBP payments. A refund is paid to your surviving spouse for the cost deducted for that part of SBP not received due to SB, uh, DIC being paid. If the DIC payment offsets the entire SBP, all costs will be refunded. Okay, so they're going to refund your premiums there. 
Um, these refunds are taxed as income to survivors since they were not taxed when we're deducted from retirement pay. That makes sense to me. Um, DIC is exempt from federal and state income tax, which gives a surviving spouse more take home. All right. Um, there's a lot going on there. That's uh, I didn't realize that you could only I, I didn't realize that. So that's interesting. Let's see the worksheet here. SBP worksheet. Determine your base amount. Multiply by six. Uh, example, uh, 2000. Yeah, why do they get multiplied by six? Why is it not by 6.5? And that's it. That's literally, it's that simple. So spouse and foreign spouse SBP. And the determinate base amount, 2,000 multiplied by 6.5 is 130 bucks a month is your coverage. Can it get any simpler than that? Um, and you get some other worksheets here. So I just, let me wrap this up. I'm a huge, huge fan of SBP. I, I do, I, and I know someone can make the, the case that buying a whole life policy or, you know, heaven forbid, a universal life policy could pay off better. I, I get that. But SBP, get it subsidized to some extent, plus it has a cost of living adjustment automatically in there. Man, that's going to be hard to beat. Uh, there's no risk to you whatsoever other than the federal government going out of business. And so if you're worried about that, well, you might as well just go into Alaska uh, because we're all going to be doomed. So at the end of the day, with a whole life policy or a universal life policy, you're relying on a lot going on there to go right. And then the fact there's no cost of living adjustment, I just don't see how the life insurance can over overcome this. I'm sure some life insurance agents say you're wrong. Well, I just at the end of the day, I am a conservative in terms of I like the idea of leaving well enough alone. Keep it simple, stupid. And if I can know it's going to cost me one hundred thirty dollars for my surviving spouse to get eleven hundred bucks at my death with a continued cost of living adjustment. And after 30 years is completely paid up. I'm one hundred percent behind that for one hundred thirty bucks. You're not going to get a very big whole life policy at 40 years old. That's going to cost you one hundred thirty dollars. That's going to give you a paid up premium or paid up uh, benefit at 30 years from now that's going to pay that kind of money. You just, I mean, that's 12, that's almost 13,000 a year uh, that your surviving spouse will get based on you having a benefit base of 2000 a month. She'll get 1150. You're just not going to see that. I and mean, that's 1150 times 12. Uh, that's times 12. That's 13,000 a year in benefits. So if she had $300,000 life insurance, uh, divide that by 13,000 without anything. That's only 21 years. I mean, that's, you're just not going to get, and then that's not include the cost of living adjustments either. And the SVP will stop once you die in terms of the premiums that you have to pay, not the benefit, but the premiums you have to pay. That's just, that's not going to happen. So, uh, you know, if you die early or the, I guess a big one would be, what if she dies before you do then it could be some issues, but at the end of the day, you're still in pain initially 130 bucks. Yeah, I, don't, I just think you should do it. Absolutely. I, I don't think any, it's going to be tough to argue against SBP. It's just it. So hope this helps. If you're interested in SBP, certainly go to the military uh, website here. I'll put a link in the notes and uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you've been through it, I'd love to hear your, your issues that you've had for sure. Put them in the show notes, comments, comments, comments. Always help me. Don't forget to subscribe. It will go over a couple other things on this website because I do find it pretty interesting for uh, for military personnel getting ready to separate from service. So don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. And then go to heritagewealthplanning.com, heritagewealthplanning.com. Thanks, guys.